everybody, and welcome to today's episode of Sadlier School Live. I'm excited to be bringing back on the wonderful and amazing Dr. Matthew Bayronavond. Hello, Matthew. Hello, Cam. How are you doing today? I am doing great, except for the slight technical hiccup we had logging on here today. Everything has been really peachy, so I hope it's been good on your end as well. No complaints, no complaints. Better to be late than not be able to make it at all, but it was a Facebook issue, not our issue. We're happy to be here today. Before we dive into today's topic, which is a really good one, everybody, this is something that Dr. Matthew Bayronavon has done on several master classes for us, and it's always a hit. So we are excited to have you with us here today. If you are watching live or possibly catching a replay, we would love to connect with you. So if you could leave a comment on this video, just say hello. We would love to say hello back and just start a conversation with you. So Matthew, why don't you take it away and tell us about today's topic? Okay, so what we are going to do today is something that is appropriate 100% for teachers, but also for parents. And sometimes in the last few weeks, I have been receiving emails and correspondence with parents who said, we've kind of had enough with all of the technology and we want to be able to find something just fun to be able to do with the kids to help a lot of the things that we talk about on here, the problem solving, the thinking, um, the ability to talk about things, the discourse, and this game activity starter challenge of what's called Which One Doesn't Belong, which was developed by Christopher Danielson, to me is such an incredible activity that not only is very engaging, but it has a very low floor, a barrier of entry, which almost anybody can get involved with, but it has a very high ceiling as a way to expand the thinking and be able to extend the learning for those students who need the additional challenge. And what's really great about it is there's not a very big language uh, component to it. There's not a lot of reading, wording, and the directions are very vague and open. All we have to do, and we're gonna look at a few examples here together, is to examine four different things and determine which one doesn't belong and be able to rationalize it and explain your reasoning behind it. And what you will quickly see as you begin looking at these is that there is at least one argument that could be made as to why each of the four options doesn't belong with the other three. So we'll start with a very simple example of just four numbers. And Cam, as I like to do, put you on the spot. Can you tell me which of these numbers doesn't belong with the rest and what the reason might be? Okay, I'm gonna start with the number nine because it is a single digit and all of the other options are double digits. Excellent, excellent. So that's a great reason for number nine. Another reason for number nine that could also be used is that if you look at the sum of the digits of all four numbers, the sum of the digits for 16, 25, and 43 all equal seven when you add them together, where nine obviously just adds up to nine. Do you think it's possible for you to come up with a different number that doesn't belong and come up with the reason? Yeah, so another one that sticks out to me is the number 16. Because when we look at this number, the second digit in that two digit number is an even number being a six, while the second digit in 25 and 43 is an odd number and nine is an odd number as well. Beautiful, very nice. And you'll notice is that not only are you able to come up with your answer and you're thinking about it, but then you are able to explain it. And that's something that kids and adults really have a hard time doing and wanting to do. But when you have something like this, where you're coming up with your own answer and reason, it makes you want to share the approach as opposed to the very closed ended type of problem. How many jelly beans does Johnny have after doing all these calculations? This open ended gives you an opportunity to think yourself, come up with it and want to be able to explain. Some other things we could look at in these numbers here is, is uh, which numbers might be prime versus composite. 
We talked about the sum of the digits. We can also look at uh, square numbers here. Which ones? 9, 16, yep. and 25 are square numbers where 43 is not a square number. And this does not only have to work with numbers. It can also be done, as we keep with the elementary level, with shapes. So let's just play along one more time here, Cam. Uh, looking at these four shapes, do you think you could identify for me? Let me ask you this time to do two different shapes and be able to explain the reason why it doesn't belong with the others. Okay. So one is going to be the square in the upper right corner. That one stands out to me as different because this one has a pattern layered on top of the shape while the other shapes do not. Excellent. And then this, and, yes. sorry, go on. No, I was just going to prompt you to just see if you could do one more. Yeah, and then the second one would be in the bottom right-hand corner, that hexagon, right? That one has five sides while the other ones only have four sides the squares and rectangles. Excellent. I really like what you are saying there because you are not only telling me what it does have for that pentagon in the in the bottom right, pentagon. but also what, yeah, no problem, but what the other ones in a sense do not have. And if we had a struggling student or someone had trouble with this, we could do a simple prompt to say, can you examine the number of sides in each of these four shapes? And then, well, the first one has four and the second, and then have them identify that. Um, yep. And then one other thing we could do is some higher level thinking on some of these, where the one in the upper left-hand corner, all sides are not congruent. It's not a regular polygon, to use the mathematical term, where the other three, all sides have the exact same length. So you can also do it as a game to see how many different things can you come up with. Again, as you know, games are something that's very important to me, and you could make this as a game where you could either do it sitting around with your children or as a snack or dinner activity. Let's pick up one of these here and we could spend a good five to 10 minutes just talking about this. And we are really doing mathematics without even the use of numbers, which I think is a great thing to be able to be doing. Yep. Another example, we're not gonna necessarily go through the other examples here, but I wanted to share them with you. And I know that Cam, you're dropping the links to uh, the website that was developed in correlation with uh, Christopher Danielson for this. And also to my master class where we go into more detail for these, here are different examples of coins, uh, which are clearly are the US coins. And again, we can have conversations with the colors, uh, with the front and the back, uh, the sizes, et cetera, the number of the coins there for doing it. And then one more example, uh, I know primarily our audience here is, is the elementary and early middle school, but this is an algebra one. And Cam, I know that you don't necessarily fancy yourself as a mathematician here, uh, which is absolutely okay, but I do know you have a growth mindset. But yeah. even if you don't even know what the heck is going on with these equations, which I'm sure you do a little bit, but you could still look and make observations just based on the study of patterns as to which ones may not belong with the rest and the reason why. So I'm gonna put you on the spot one more time, Cam, just looking at the patterns of what we see here, which one do you think may not belong with the others and, and have a reason behind it? Yeah, so I'm gonna go with the upper left one, y equals four x, because in this equation, we just have the four X. We don't add on like a plus seven or a plus four or a minus one. Exactly. So this can be a very difficult thing for middle and early high school kids and very intimidating. We're trying to write these linear equations. But what if we just were to unpack it with what you just did there? Say, hey, you know what? We're not adding or subtracting anything to it. Or I noticed the one in the bottom left has a negative value in front of in front of the x. Yep. Uh, or the one in the, the upper right, there's no number in front of x. And then talk a little bit about what that means. Again, the idea is come in with a low barrier of entry, a low floor where every student can begin thinking and doing the activity. Because sometimes when we do mathematics, we immediately start and a third of the kids immediately shut off because they can't find out where they are in their understanding of it. But with which one doesn't belong, everybody has an opportunity, even if you don't know or understand the mathematics, to just visually see, look at the pattern, 
which one doesn't belong with the rest. And that's why it's a big recommendation for me for both parents and teachers. I couldn't agree more, not only for the simple reason that my kids love games and when we are doing learning through game, it's more engaging and fun for them, but my kids are also a little bit sick of doing school plus tech. Like if the technology means it's school time, they're not really having it right now. But if I can incorporate fun games like this into our day to day, it makes it simple. And it's great because I have kids in multiple grade levels. And like you said, this can be adapted for, you know, that low barrier of entry for my kindergarten so that she can also join the discussion with my second grader. So I love yep. this game and I'm so glad that you brought this on here and shared it with us today. As you had mentioned, I dropped links to this activity's website, which one doesn't belong in the chat, as well as a link to where you can access Dr. Matthew Bayronavon's most recent masterclass that he just did in March. And if you follow that link for the masterclass, after you submit the form, you'll receive immediate access to that masterclass. And if you go through the two trainings at the end of it, you'll qualify to receive a certificate of participation that you can take back to your district if they accept it for those PD credits. So we hope you enjoyed today's show. And Dr. Matthew will be back on here with me tomorrow for some more great math fun. Thank you, Matthew. Great to see you. Look forward to tomorrow with another activity with that low barrier of entry, low floor, but yet a very high ceiling. So we'll do another one tomorrow. Awesome. I will see you at 3 o'clock p.m. Eastern, 12 o'clock Pacific, and have a wonderful evening until then. Bye, Cam. Bye. See ya.